Hello again, a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Danny Kane, and I'm here today with the cheapest bottle of whiskey that I have reviewed to date. If you don't already subscribe, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, or feel free to leave a comment. This is a bottle of the famous Grouse Blended Scotch Whiskey, bottled at 40% ABV, non-age statement, colouring, yes, chill filtration, yes, very accessible, yes, very easy to find, and also very well priced. This bottle in front of me is closed, so my plan is to actually go through this experience first time uh, with you here. Obviously, it's not going to get very much time in the glass. It quite simply just is what it is. I have had um, some famous grouse in the past, some um, bottlings from yesteryear, and then also some with age statements on them, but not one of these, I would say, for a very, very, very long time. So, we will pour, smell, taste, go through the whole experience, and essentially what I'll be able to let you know are my thoughts and whether I think it's worth the money. Because we can't just always have, well maybe some of you can, but um, really expensive daily drinkers at hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Doesn't mean that we need to go out and buy you know, 30 to $40 blends, but if you can find some that are easy drinking, then why not? Because I actually think that the Naked Grouse, obviously the version that's been finished in Oloroso casks, is actually pretty decent stuff. Um, the, the brand itself um, has been around since about 1896, 1897, but the Glogue family who, um, who owns it, uh, Matthew Glogue, actually started to, um, I guess you could say, sort of become involved with um, with whiskey and selling whiskey back since sort of 1800. He was a, a merchant and um, selling wine and then whiskey. And obviously, as it goes with a lot of these blends, started to um, to blend and make some, some whiskey throughout the years. Then obviously, um, it sort of took off for some from there. His son, uh, William, took over and, um, in the in the area that this was sold at the time, it was it became a bit of a um, it grew a reputation and was called the famous um, grouse. Prior to that, it was just the grouse. So um, then, what happened was it was rebranded to the famous grouse. And I think in the early nineteen hundreds, the actual um, the grouse, the bird, also started to appear as well, which, as I've learned, is um, Scotland's game bird. So bit of bit of a story there, but the Glogue family been involved with it for many, many years. Obviously now owned by Edrington Group. So that's why when you see some of those blends I mentioned earlier, 18, 21 year old even, um, you know, still available at some pretty decent prices. And you think about some of the actual um, malts that are, um, that fall under the Edrington Group portfolio. So I guess if you have, for example, a 21 year old, you know, McAllen, Highland Park, for example, in there, then all of a sudden that becomes really, really appealing, especially at the price points, because if you were to buy that just as a single malt, you know, you're, you're forking out quite a little bit of money. Anyway, I know that I um, sort of have a bit of a tendency sometimes to just sort of go on. This hasn't really had very much time in the glass, but... Okay, so there are some apples in there some caramel, a little bit of vanilla as well, some bitter orange, a little bit of a wood influence as well. Oranges are absolutely coming to the forefront now. It is a little bit creamy. It is a, um, I guess you could say, a very easy nosing whiskey and it is quite rounded as well. There is nothing specifically that absolutely stands out to begin with. The nose is relatively pleasant, rounded, sweet, with some fruit that comes um, to the forefront, as I said, mainly apples and oranges, along with some caramel, toffee if you like, vanilla, and some bitterness. 40% ABV, I won't be adding any water to this at any point. Initially, that tastes a lot better than I expected. A 
very, very decent dram indeed. It's sweet, creamy, a lot of vanilla comes to the forefront, apples, touch of pear, a little bit waxy as well. The finish is a little bit malty. Um, the finish is relatively short. So it's not, honestly, it's not half bad. So um, I might be coming across a little bit surprised now because I was going with absolutely no expectations whatsoever. That is, that is a <laughs> very, very, very um, decent blend. Normally, as you know, for those that um, have sat down and taken the time to watch any of my reviews in the past, I will be going through um, and reviewing a bottle that has been opened for, for most part um, quite a while and I've had many times. This here, <laughs> you know, I've opened it up for the first time and um, as I said, I've not had a, um, a very um, recent bottle of Famous Grouse. Oh, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you when. So I really went in not expecting anything, no thoughts about it. Look, now a little bit of bitterness. Um, I mentioned that earlier, but it absolutely starts to come through more and more. And you can really um, get a get a bit of a grasp of the grain components as well in this. Now, I'm not sure as to the actual makeup and the components in the whiskey. I'm gonna probably look to some of the uh, whiskies that are in, in the Edrington um, portfolio and say that you'd have some of that young stuff in there. But, as I said, very, very easy drinking dram. If someone were to pour you a glass of this or if you went to somebody's house and they had a bottle of this, do not turn your nose up at it. If you know, if you need just something that's really easy drinking and um, that's really affordable, um, if you haven't had this, then yeah, why not? Is it worth the money? Yes. Would I buy another bottle of it? Probably would, yeah. Um, as I said, Easy drinking, some of that. So, still creamy. Some wax, uh, waxiness that comes through. The fruits that I mentioned earlier, predominantly pear, apple. The apples are a mixture of green apples and also um, red apples. Bits of orange is what comes through. Creamy vanilla notes, absolutely there. And then that bitterness. So I said that bit of orange, it's almost a little bit of bitter wood as well. Pretty decent stuff, no fuss, dram. I'm going to leave it at that because it really has um, surprised me. I went in with absolutely zero expectations whatsoever. I honestly thought that I would take a sip and um, and I kind of think, yeah, this is really, really average. And I would say that it's certainly not going to change your world, but at the price point, um, if you're going with absolutely zero expectations, your expectations will <laughs> definitely be exceeded. So, look, if I was to score this, and I was to consider the price point and everything along those lines, I, I, I can't give it a um, anything higher than a six and a half, but that is a very, very um, respectable six and a half. If I were to compare it to, you know, maybe some of the drams that I have recently um, reviewed. If I were to literally just, you know what, call it a seven. I know I'm doing a little bit of that procrastinating right now, but let's just give it a seven out of 10, quite simply because it's really caught me by a little bit of surprise. The price point is very, very good. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I absolutely would. Would I buy another bottle of it? Yeah, why not? We'll leave, we'll leave it at that, hey? Not a statement cheapy right here. It's really, uh, really over-delivered. So, thank you very much for joining me once again. Remember to subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Cheers to you. Till next time.